Hi, in today's video we're going to take a look at using ARDA and OBS Studio. We're going to record our microphone with ARDA, apply some effects, and then send the audio into OBS Studio. As you can see here, I have ARDA running, and I'll show you a list of the plugins I've got enabled. We have Noise Suppression, which I believe uses RN Noise, which is the same noise reduction engine used by OBS Studio. Uh, okay, and um, we have a noise gate here. So this is the noise gate to remove audio below a certain threshold. Then we have a equalizer here, which allows us to cut off low frequency noise, such as fans, deep noise, that sort of thing, and pull down various frequencies um, to improve the vocal quality and also increase the high level um, pronunciation in words up here. So that's the equalizer. We then have a multiband compressor here. And these are all the Linux Studio plugins. Um, these are all free and open source plugins that I'm using here. After the multiband, Compressor, we have another compressor here. And finally down here, we have the limiter. So if I switch across to OBS Studio here, what you'll see is we have the Jack Input Client. And if I select the filters here, you'll see I've got all these filters and they're currently disabled. Um, now the issue with these filters is, although they do a good job, there's no visual feedback of a audio waveform so you can actually see what's going on. Also, there should be an option to use VST2 plugins, but this isn't actually showing up on my system. And apparently this is a common issue. And what you're supposed to do is actually create a VST directory and put VST two plugins in there and then should show up but i haven't actually been able to get it to work so i decided to have a look at using arda to record the audio so what i'll do is i'll go through the setup and show you how you actually get this all connected so this is the arda interface and what i'm going to be doing is actually showing you the routing grid which is um, accessible by clicking this little button. And I can't show you this while I'm actually recording. So what I've done is create a uh, presentation so that we can actually come in and have a look at the setup. So what I'm going to do is go through how we get Jack set up, how we route the audio from Arda into OBS Studio, and also how you can disable monitoring in ARDA so that you're not hearing your voice when you're talking to the microphone through the headphones. Let me tap T. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm using FreeBSD here, and FreeBSD has the, in my opinion, the best audio system Mac Windows, Linux, um, it beats them all. Um, the quality is, is much, much better. So what I'm going to do is come through this slide. So first of all, on FreeBSD, for Jacked, what we need to do is, is add the Mac priority to etc.rc.conf. And we do that by running sudo sysrc kld list plus equals double quotes mac underscore priority and this is used by jack to access the real-time um, processing basically we then load the mac priority kernel module by running sudo kld load mac priority and finally what you need to do is add yourself to the real-time group replacing username with your username in the command below so we would run sudo pw group mod real time dash m username replacing your username with your username. 
So the next step on FreeBSD is we want to improve um, the latency. So what we can do is we run sudo vi, etc. sys ctl.conf. And what we have in here is setting the, de um, the default audio output to our headphones. The first device, um, the first unit um, is the speakers. And on my system, the set, um, the so it's starting from a zero index. So zero is the speakers, one is my headphone. So we're setting the default audio output to our headphones. The next option down here is to use auto, um, use new audio devices automatically by setting hwsnd.default underscore auto equals one. The next useful option is don't auto reset the volume to default. Um, there's a default audio level and what happens is suppose you put the volume level up to 70 and reboot um, the volume would automatically be reset. So what we do is we add this setting so that the audio levels are maintained after a reboot. The next section we have here is a couple of audio tweaks. We have hw.snd.latency equals zero. Kern time counter dot allowed deviation equals zero and hw dot USB dot U audio dot buffer underscore MS equals two. And what this does is this reduces the audio latency um, so that it's much more responsive. So the next step after that is actually installing Jack. Now, if you're on a different operating system than FreeBSD, um, you'd obviously replace the command shown here with ones applicable to your system. So on FreeBSD, we run sudo pkg install audio forward slash jack. And then what we need to do is edit our etc. rc.conf by running sudo vi forward slash etc. forward slash rc.conf. And in that file, what we're going to do is enable a couple of op options. SND IOD underscore enable equals yes. I think that actually may not be needed and is actually enabled by default, but I've been using it for years. The next three options are for Jack. So we have Jack enable no. And because we're doing that because we don't want to start Jack up. Um, every time we boot up, we're, we're just going to start it up on demand. We then have Jack user and replace username with your username. And then finally we have Jack, Jacked RT priority equals yes. So that's the real time priority. So after that, what we need to do is when we plug in our microphone, we actually need to use the FreeBSD mixer to set the microphone level. By default, the microphone level is actually set to 25%. So in this example here, I'm using mixer dash F dev mixer three, mic dot volume equals 100 colon 100. And you need to look at the, um, your cat, was it dev S and D stat, um, to actually see what your audio devices are. Okay. Now we're going to move on to installing Arda. Now the thing with Arda is, um, it has a feature to use a video timeline. So you can actually import a video and see the video as you're manipulating the audio. So what we first need to do is install the Arda package on FreeBSD. That would be sudo pkg install Arda. Now, the next thing I want to get into is um, the timeline, as I was saying. This video timeline feature uses or requires a couple of packages. Uh, one is called Harvid, um, which is available on FreeBSD by running sudo pkg install Harvid. The next package you actually need is xj, xjdo, and that can be downloaded from SourceForge, and it's not actually available as a package on FreeBSD. And what you need to do is install XCB um, as a requirement. Uh, once you've downloaded the package, you just basically run 
configure, make, sudo make, install, and that will install XJDO. Um, I haven't actually tried this as yet, but I'm just mentioning it in case you're wondering why the video timeline function's not working. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next is actually starting Jack. So once we've got everything set up, Jack's installed, we can run following command. So we have jacked dash R for real time audio, dash D, the audio backend we want to use. In this case, it's OSS, dash R to specify the rate, uh, the audio rate, dash C is the capture device, which in our case is the microphone. So that's dev DSP3, and the playback device is dev DSP1, which is my headphones. So as you can see here, got real time audio, the back end, the rate, the capture device, and the playback device. So you need to start Jack before you start um, Arda. Arda also works with Pipewire, I believe, but I'm not using that, so I can't fill you in on how that works. So you need to look that up. Okay, so we've started Jack. So now what I'm gonna do is actually explain Arda record and monitoring. So what we have here is a screenshot of the routing grid. So if I just come back across to this section here, you can see this little button down here. This is what you would actually click um, to actually access this. So uh, you, you come down and click this. So after you've actually added a track, you just right click and do, you know, add track. What you need to do is come down, we select the audio track, we click on that little button I showed you and we select Routing Grid. Okay, so what we need to do to enable monitoring, so this is for when you're actually testing stuff out and you wanna t um, apply effects and hear them back in real time. So you wanna be able to talk into your microphone and hear the output in your headphones. So what you need to do is actually come down to this little hardware tab here and put little click in these boxes here and add little green um, circles. And that means that it's taking the output from this audio one, which is the audio track, and sending it to the playback device, the hardware playback device, which we specified with Jack. Remember in the previous step, we ran dash capital P and the um, playback device, the headphones. So once you've done that, what you need to do is actually come across here and select in. Once you've done those following steps, uh, seeding steps rather, you'll actually be able to hear the output of the microphone in your headphones or whatever you've defined as a playback device. So that's for when you're getting set up. That's just so you can test stuff out. Um, but what we wanna do for OBS Studio is actually set it up so that we're not hearing the output of the microphone in our headphones with Arda. You can enable monitoring in OBS Studio um, and Pulse Audio or Pipewire has to be started for that to uh, allow you to select the output device. So OBS Studio. So on FreeBSD, we would run sudo pkg install OBS Studio. Now, as I said, what you need to do, at least on FreeBSD, is to select the monitoring device. You have to start Pulse Audio before opening FreeBSD. Otherwise, you won't be able to select the audio monitoring device in the OBS Studio settings. Um, it, you won't be able to click the button to select any audio device. So you start Pulse Audio with Pulse Audio dash dash start dash dash demonize and send the output to dev null. Okay, so this is the jacked input. So this is a screenshot of OBS Studio. And as you can see, what I've done is I've clicked the little plus button here and selected jack input client. And what you want to do is leave it like this. Don't click start Jack server. Just leave it like that and click OK. OK. 
So now we're going to look at Ardell and OBS Studio and setting up the routing grid. So again, what we do is we click the little button. Okay, let me just show you this little button down here. And what you do is you select routing grid. You then come across to the hardware section and make sure that these two um, are disabled, that there's no little green dots in here. So if you've added the green dots before, just remove them by clicking in those little squares. And that will stop the audio monitoring with um, ARDA. What we then need to do is actually come into this extended tab down here. And what you need to do is actually have OBS Studio open. And as you can see here, what we have here is OBS Studio listed as a Jack input client. So this is OBS Studio, the Jack input client we created in a previous step. And what you need to do is click in those little buttons there so that you actually have the little green icons. And what that's doing is that's routing the audio from Arda out into OBS Studio. And the final thing that you need to do is you need to click monitoring input. If you don't click monitoring input, you won't have any audio going through into OBS Studio. Okay, next step. Um, these are some of the plugins um, that I had a look at. Uh, I didn't use these ones. We've got the NVIDIA Studio Plugins LV2, which can be installed on FreeBSD with sudo pkg install Invader Studio Plugins LV2. Um, the X42 Plugins LV2 are supposed to be quite good as well. Um, they don't look quite as pretty as the Linux Studio Plugins, and these can be installed with sudo pkg install x42-plugins-lv2. Uh, these are the plugins that I'm using, which are the LSP plugins, which can be installed with sudo pkg install lsp-plugins-lv2. Uh, we've got noise suppressant for voice. This is a package that I wasn't actually using. Um, has a slightly different interface than the noise suppressant I'm using. Uh, so that this is the noise suppressant for voice. That can be installed with sudo pkg install noise dash suppression dash for dash voice dash lv2. And we have RN noise here. And I believe that this is actually installed as a dependency for OBS Studio. And this is so we can actually use the same noise suppression plugin in OBS Studio, uh, in Arda that we're using in OBS Studio. There's also another version called Iron Noise dash NU. I believe one's newer than the other. I think I'm using the RN Noise. Okay, and so this is the plugin order that I'm actually using. Um, noise reduction, noise gate, a 16-band equalizer, a multi-band compressor, a compressor, and a limiter. Okay. So what I'll do now is switch back to Arda after going through all that. And hopefully that will give you a bit of a clue on how to get this um, set up and route the audio from Arda into OBS Studio. And again, this is to solve the issue of the filtering in OBS Studio, not having any feedback. You know, you just have to dial, you can slide. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and disable all the um, plugins and then en en enable them one by one so you can actually hear the difference. So I'll just go through and I can just click on these and disable them. Okay, so you should be able to hear the fans kicking in. So that's the, so here's the noise suppressant enabled. And here is the noise gate.
So we'll turn on the noise gate. Then we'll turn on the equalizer. I suppose it might be good just to show you as I'm clicking here. So the noise gate is uh, set up here. I haven't actually, I'm just using the default settings for the noise suppression. I haven't um, played around with it too much. Seems to do the job. And then what we have here is the equalizer. So this is the equalizer cutting out various frequencies, low level frequencies, deep level frequencies in my voice and pushing up the high notes a little bit so it doesn't sound too flat. And here's the multiband compressor. Um, I don't know if me enabling any of these filters as I'm actually recording is going to cause any glitches, but I just thought I'd show you um, as I enable stuff um, how it sounds. Uh, so then what we have is the compressor. So here's the compressor. And what I suppose I should do is actually just give you a brief overview of some of the settings. And finally, the limiter. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go back through those one by one just to show you the um, settings. So we've got the noise gate here. So the settings we've got are we've got the attack, the release, the threshold. So the threshold is uh, where we want to cut stuff off below that particular level. And again, with these sort of things, you can only, um, it's no good just blindly copying settings from people because everyone's got a different voice, a different room they're recording in. So with these things, you really need to sort of have a bit of a play around. And the other issue, it's not so much an issue, but the other thing to bear in mind is you're not just learning how to use Arda. You have to learn how to use each of the plugins that you're using as well. So it's like learning, having to learn a separate program. So again, we've got the attack, uh, the release, the threshold set here, um, the zone, and that's about it. Okay, and what we've got here is, um, I, could, I can disable all these one by one. Okay, so you can see that's all disabled. I'll turn on the low shelf. Um, oh, that one. So that's cutting out low level noise. Just pulling out stuff down here. And basically what you can do, you can see these little things down here. What you do is you create a bell. So you can see here, this is a, uh, which one is it? No, this one. Okay, so what you do is you create a bell filter here. And what you typically do is you sort of set this to something like, you know, um, uh, 12, 11, 12, something like that. And you you can see down this, what, what we've got here is the frequency and then the decibel level. So what you actually do is you push up the decibel level to say like 8, 10. And you use this knob to sweep across the frequencies to actually catch any annoying frequencies. And then you can actually pull down the gain to reduce those frequencies. So that's the gist of what these are. And this might look similar if you've used something like DaVinci Resolve, which has got a similar looking equalizer. Okay. And then we've got the multiband compressor. So what we've got here is the multiband compressor. Um, we have the level here. So you can set the, uh, you can position these to actually uh, affect particular frequencies and you can then apply different levels of compression to those frequencies basically. So let's close that one. So that was the multiband compressor and then we had the compressor here and what we've got is the ratio the need the makeup and what you can see here is this is the threshold so you can see as I'm talking the um, audio is coming up about here so what we're doing is we're 
cutting off um, stuff below that threshold and we're applying a makeup. You can see the light gray line under here. That's the original audio signal. But by adding the makeup, we can actually um, increase the audio level. Right. And finally, what we have is the limiter. So this is the limiter. Uh, we can increase the threshold. Um, we've got the attack and release. And basically, you can increase the threshold, which will increase the audio levels. Now, another thing that you can do, let me see if this will actually come up as I'm recording. You can see this open video section, and that is what uses Harvard and XJDO. Um, so if we come to export, export audio files. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this when I do it, but I'm selecting a FLAC 24-bit here. I'm just recording this audio as I'm typing it into OBS Studio just so I can show you the audio waveforms. Um, you can select different types and if you click edit here, um, what you do is you unclick normalize because we're already doing that. And what you can do is click this button here, um, analyze exported audio. And I'm not going to do that as I'm recording, but what that will do is it will actually print out a graph after you've actually finished exporting the audio and will also analyze the audio levels, um, the different services like YouTube and different, you know, um, video platforms, audio platforms have different audio levels that they want you to aim for. And I believe um, there's a thing called the EBU 128 scale uh, for measuring audio levels. And YouTube, I believe, recommends about 14, um, forget, LUFS, I think it's called. And with this setup here, I've got about a 16.1 LUFS, which is pretty good um, for what we want. So as you can see here, we've got um, OBS Studio and Arda running at the same time. And we've got the audio coming through. And if I just come back to the laptop scene, you can see the audio is coming through the Jack input client. So what I'm going to do just um, at the end is come into the presentation here. And what this is, is this is actually Emacs. And this is a org file here. And there is a plugin called org slide tree. Um, I think that's what it's called. And basically what this does is it allows us to create a presentation. So when I run uh, org tree slide mode, yeah, same, got words in the wrong order. Org tree slide mode, what you will see is instantly what happens is I've removed the um, mode line. Um, and as I go through this, you can see we have these nice, this nice little effect. Um, what I've also done is remove the output. Normally it says like next slide, next slide, previous slide, that sort of thing. I've also removed that. And what you'll notice is when I come out of this org tree slide mode, what happens is I've set it so that the mode line is actually re-enabled. So what I'm just going to do, just in case you're interested in this sort of thing, um, is actually go through the code. And uh, David Wilson of System Crafters has got an excellent video and a set of notes that I took a lot of bits of code um, to actually get this working. So what I'm going to do is just come across to my emacs init.bl and what I'm going to do is just come down here. So um, what I'm doing is I'm actually using, I've got no idea how you pronounce this font here. Why can't they have more pronounceable names? But that's the font I'm using. Now you can install this with a package on FreeBSD, but it actually takes up three gig of space. So I actually just downloaded the font. So that's how I'm setting the font and slide, org tree slide mode. Ah, I need to do one thing actually. Okay, let me just come up here to 
org tree. So, so what we've got here is um, resizing the org tree, uh, the org heading. So if I come across here, um, you should notice these have kind of got different levels um, of font weight applied to the headings. And that is done by doing require org faces and uh, whacking in this bit of code here to set the font size for different org levels and specifying font. Um, I'll link to this so that you can actually have a look. And if I come down to the slide section of org tree slide, what we've got here is um, two functions to find uh, my presentation setup and my presentation end. And what this does is, first of all, we set you local mode line format nil that hides the mode line. And then what we're doing here is actually setting the font weight for various bits of the um, text. So if I come in here um, and do org tree slide mode, hang on. What you'll notice is um, all the font is scaled. So this font here is scaled and the font in the source code block is scaled. If you just use text scaling, um, it won't scale the source code blocks. So that's why we have to um, specify different bits of the org document and set the uh, font weight for them. Then what we don't have down here in the presentation end, which is triggered when the presentation ends, is I'm using doom mode line. So we set doom mode line, set mode line to main, which restores the mode line. And what we do is we actually uh, reset the font weights back to the default. What we then have down here is um, some settings so that certain org faces use the fixed pitched face when variable pitch mode is on. Okay. Um, and what we have here is these presentation hooks, org tree slide play hook, and that kick and that starts the my presentation setup and the org tree slide stop hook. And that calls the my presentation end function, which I just showed you up above. And here's some org tree slide settings. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the header to nil. Normally it will display a header of the document and like the author and the date, and I don't want that. Uh, we've got some activation methods. So when you start the presentation, it says presentation started or presentation finished. Um, we specify, we, we want a slide in effect. We can affect the breadcrumbs. Um, you can actually emphasize the headings, but I've, we're already using font weight to do that, so we don't need to do that. Blank line, um, uh, slide in blank lines. This is a this is the amount um, that the slide kind of slides in, basically. Um, and the final one, org tree slide indicator nil, is what actually sets the presentation to not use um, the next and previous in the mode line. What we also have here is this bit of code that hides lines starting with colon plus, and that is used. Um, if I come across to, if I come out of this and come across to the images, okay. What you'll see here is we've got um, inline images enabled in Emacs, and you'll see what we can do is we can specify attribute org width 80%, but we don't want that text to actually appear in the presentation. So if I come across to something with an image, eventually, okay, there you'll see. So that bit of code actually removes the um, bit of code that specifies the width so that we don't actually see it in the presentation. So it removes the attribute org from the presentation. Um, yeah, so that's basically that. And at the end, what we have is the um, these two hooks here to enable that function. So that's basically the gist of it, um, how you can connect 
Arda and OBS Studio so that you can actually record your microphone and apply different effects that uh, you might not have access to in OBS Studio. I said OBS Studio does have support for VST plugins, but only VST2 plugins. And as I showed you, the actual option to use VST2 um, plugins doesn't show up on my system. Uh, and you're supposed to be able to create a directory and put plugins in there and it show up, but it just never worked for me. So as I said, that's why I got into looking into using something else to actually apply audio filters and plugins to the microphone. Um, you can use things like Carla to host plugins and stuff like that and QJAC CTL, but that requires starting several programs and it's not that obvious how you use it. So I think uh, Arda is a really good option if you want to use filters um, on your audio to remove background noise, compression, um, limiters, you know, equalizers, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, it wasn't very obvious to me how you actually get this set up. One, how you connected all the bits and most importantly, how you could actually stop audio monitoring within Arda because I find it really distracting hearing my own voice while I'm actually talking into the microphone. So that's all for now. Hope that helps out. I'll put links to everything under the video.